So Hi. here I am. Yeah, you nabbed me. Finally. Jeez, you know, she's know. she's faster than Chia Pet. I know. But I know, seriously. I am. Especially when you want to. Well, you be. know, I got two conferences going and I'm just running. And so and it's like you are. It, it's it's kinda like my whole year with the dog. I travel with my dog. She's adorable. So it's never about me. I don't have to wear makeup. I don't have to get dressed up because it's all about the dog. I come here, Annie, 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 Annie. It's like, it's like I don't get a moment. So yeah, that's yeah. where you need the Annie get your gun. Uh, yeah, okay, yeah. Right. <laughs> I told you my friend bought me a gun because of that phrase. I know. Yeah. People I, say, are you Amy? I go, Annie, like Annie, what, what's Annie? Like Annie get your gun. Isn't gun. Do much. No. No. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> You're funny. Okay, so here okay. we are. Yeah. We're getting close to the end yeah. of the best answer for cancer conference. Yeah. I, I, you know, it's funny. I start them out thinking I can't wait till it's over, and I end them up thinking, oh, it's gonna be over soon. Yeah. Right. You always feel that way. I love them. It's yeah. like a trip ending that you mm -hmm. loved so much, mm -hmm. and you know, uh, you probably don't want to hear this too early, but you're you're beloved. Too. Oh. And people are so grateful mm. for the gift that you're giving, and you should know that. Thank you. You know, um, tell people who can't be here, because next time they'll know why, a little bit of your story and how you came to bring this to fruition. Oh, okay. Well, really, I, I've told you, I know, but. When I went through cancer in 2001, there wasn't a lot out there. I had to pretty much find my own way. When I got through, I was like, oh my goodness, this was so easy. And it was so pleasant. It, did, you know, it, it didn't match that picture of cancer at all. And so I thought, well, you know, I, I made a deal with God when I was so distraught over the diagnosis. Um, I made a deal. It's like, okay, if I go, if I die, that's okay because I'm just going to heaven. My picture of heaven and I'm excited to be there. That's not a bad thing to me. If I stay, I'll have things to help others. So when I got through, and it had been so, so easy, I just kept thinking, I've gotta, I've gotta do that because I don't think people know how easy it can be. Mm -hmm. I think we all think, you know, we hear that cancer word, we see that picture. Bald, vomiting, missing body parts, dying. Powerless. A horrible death, yeah, powerless. So that's why I do what I do. I started, uh, actually started a uh, best answer as best answer, but it wasn't the girl that I was doing it with named it after her mother. And it was a project of another nonprofit. It was the Elka Best Foundation. And so I was just a co-founder of that. And um, unfortunately she died. She got MRSA in the hospital. They didn't even know what it was, but it was not, I lost a good friend and our movement lost its head, basically. She was leading it. So. I decided that that was the time, if I was going to go on by myself, I was going to make it a 501c3 and call it Best Answer for Cancer. So that's what I did in 2006. And really, it's always been a double-armed uh, foundation. It's the only hybrid out there. So it's part one arm for physicians, one arm for public. And But we've never focused on the public. We've always been training physicians and incur, you know recruiting physicians. And it really has taken this long to get them everything they need and have a really thriving medical membership arm and one that the patients can get to. They can get to all those those physicians online on the website, Best Answer for Cancer, and click on Find a Physician. Um, anyway, so now it's time for the public. And so this year we're really focusing on the public and we, for the first time ever, hi, come here, <laughs> come here, come here, come here, come. There you go, oh my goodness, all right. Well, she's my diabetic alert dog, and she's not supposed to be away from me. So that's what all this excitement is about. She's like, wait, you're not ah. anywhere near me. Oh, okay, so calm down. So here so you anyway, are now. Here we How are. many years? Uh, it's uh, uh, 16 for the physicians. It's all right. Calm down. Wow. 16 for the physicians, 16th Annual International Integrative Oncology Conference, 10 for the public, so that's 10th uh, Answers for Cancer Summit. But again, this is really the first year. Uh, last year was the year we kicked off the Answers for Cancer Summit. And this is our first year on the East Coast with the Answers for Cancer Summit. So, and it, we've done extremely well both years. I'm really excited about this year. We've had a lot of great response. But and you've had great. a lot of uh, people who have returned for you year after year because of the way that you do this conference. And yeah. quite frankly, Annie, because of you. 
Oh, thanks. Um, because I mean, that the, means something. It yeah, really it's does. It's the truth. It's yeah. the joy that you spread. Chia pets a drop, but truly, <laughs> it's you. The dog. And, um, and you, you know, I know that you're gr so grateful to so many of the people that have, that have been on this story and this journey with you. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm sure there's too many to even begin to mention. Oh, yes. Um, uh, but I, I, if you feel like you want to throw some out there, I think that's an important... Well, uh, sure, I'd love to. I mean, we just had a, that award ceremony. I think you missed most of it downstairs. I, know, I tried to be there. But, but we recognized um, three of our doctors that have just been so giving and loving and unselfish and just really support structure for the educational part of the foundation yes. for the doctors and that was Dr. Jesse Stoff, MD, he's uh, from New York, Dr. Sean Devlin, he's a DO, MDH, HMD, just got, guy just loves to learn and he's from Reno, Nevada and then Jurgen Winkler from Carlsbad, California has been just so very generous and loving and giving and so those three we recognize today and we recognize a lot of our vendors who have been say, there forever and they and they actually pay for these conferences the exhibitors right so um, and, you know uh, time and again and the people that I've spoken to um, on both sides whether it's the doctors or the vendors their their love of this conference in particular just is resounding I mean you see it at every turn and what was really comes out that's very exciting is um, it, people who are so learned who are here uh, keep saying, and I learned something new. I know. They all learned something new here. Yeah. Every one of them spoke about that. And they say, I keep coming back because there's always something more. Yeah. And I think that's really at the heart of what your story is saying is that never stop learning. And is that correct? Well, it is. But, you know, I also insist, uh, and our Physicians Conference is a continuing medical education conference. Every year I insist that if you present here, and, I ha and we handpick them, we have a committee that picks these, the topics and the speakers, but the rules are if you present here, you have to present something that has never been presented anywhere else. So no matter what time of year our conferences are, no matter what t how many conferences have come before us, it's, it's all new information. It's mm -hmm. all new. And, and that's because this journey of uh, the best answer for cancer is never going to stop. No. You know, it's, all, it's always, always going to be learning. Right, it's always evolving. If you, would you change anything that you've done along the way? Oh, my gosh, no. No. I wouldn't change a thing. People, people have asked me even, you wouldn't get rid of the cancer? Like, no. No. It's made me who I am. I've never, I didn't live until I got cancer. Well, I've the other that day, we yes. were posed <laughs> an odd question, and, mm -hmm. um, um, Somebody we were speaking to asked me uh, what question I was asked you, and I asked you this question: What was your, what has been your biggest joy? So we never really got to see you answer that fully, and so I'd like to ask you again: What has been your biggest joy? You know, no one's in all the interviews I've done. No one's ever asked me that question, and I had to think for a minute. But I I keep coming back to my biggest joy is the cancer, is because. I did, I did not live before I got that diagnosis. And after I got that diagnosis, I, I can tell you I've lived every day. And every day has just been a journey of some sort. You know, even my bad days that I've, you know, had to turn around, and I've had many. Sure. Um, you know, they, when I get past them, I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, that was so valuable. And so, I, you know, I learned, you learn from everything, and everything's been just a joy. And I'm so glad you asked that question, because no one has, and it, it really opened my, eye, my own eyes. I was like, yeah, it's the cancer. Thank you. Thank you. I love you. I love you, too. You've been a joy and a gift. And this one.